This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Delicious, meat nutritious, and the snack that packs a real protein punch, wonderful pistachios. Each one ounce serving has six grams of protein, giving you over 10% of your daily value and making wonderful pistachios one of the highest protein nuts out there. But perhaps more than that, I love all of the flavors they have. Their sea salt and vinegar ones are my favorite when I'm craving that flavor, but still wanna keep it healthy. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Wonderful pistachios come in a variety of flavors like chili roasted, honey roasted, smoky barbecue, and jalapeno lime to name a few. Perfect for enjoying with family or friends and taking them with you on the go. Whether you're a pistachio purist who loves cracking open every nut or you prefer the convenience of no-shells pistachios, Wonderful Pistachios has got you covered. Grab Wonderful Pistachios and elevate your snacking game today. So fill up with a healthy snack when hunger strikes. Visit wonderfulpistachios.com to learn more. That's wonderfulpistachios.com. This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 3236, Numbing versus Relaxing. Are you disconnecting from life? And Sleep Your Way to Greater Connection, both by Christine Klusman of christineklusman.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. I have two articles that I'm sharing today, a rare treat. So let's get right to them and continue optimizing your life. Numbing versus Relaxing. Are you disconnecting from life? By Christine Klusman of christineklusman.com. At times, and especially lately, most of us will use technology to zone out, decompress, or avoid feeling our feelings. But it's important to be compassionate and realize this isn't entirely a negative thing. Zoning out and decompressing are very reasonable byproducts of screen time if we're intentional about it, and if that is indeed the outcome. It's when we use technology to numb ourselves, however, that it can become problematic and block us from leading a truly fulfilling life. When we are engaged in numbing behaviors, we are disconnected from ourselves emotionally, unaware of and unable to feel our real feelings. While this deadens the pain of difficult emotion, it also inhibits our ability to experience positive emotions, such as profound connection, joy, and a sense of belonging. What's your numbing strategy? When it comes to numbing, Screens tend to be the weapon of choice. It might be mindlessly watching TV you don't really care about, surfing the web, or losing hours to social media. Whatever you're doing, understanding the quality of attention and awareness you are bringing to the activity will help you to determine whether it's a numbing effort. Here are some common ways you may find yourself blocking out the world. Eating foods that don't make you feel good. Shopping for unnecessary or frivolous items. Working too many hours every day being perpetually busy or not present to life, prescription pills or too many glasses of wine, and compulsive relationship seeking, disconnection from a truly fulfilling life. Engaging in numbing behaviors is a sign that we are out of alignment with our deepest needs. If you find yourself numbing to procrastinate, chances are you are trying to avoid dealing with something. It could be a conflict, a tricky conversation, a big challenge or decision, or just some truth or realization you are unwilling to acknowledge. While mindlessly binge-watching Netflix can help you to escape these things in the short term, it's also likely to leave you feeling hungover rather than connected and fulfilled by the enjoyment of relaxing into your favorite show. The intention and awareness you bring to the encounter determines whether it will be a connected, fulfilling experience or a disconnected, draining experience that leaves you feeling lost and empty being conscious of why we disconnect. When compulsive numbing behaviors with technology or other forms of escape are born from anxiety, they'll likely feed on themselves and grow stronger over time. The key is recognizing that you are trying to disconnect. Often, if you're operating from an anxious place, you may feel slightly on edge, wound tightly, or that your breathing is shallow. However, the symptoms of numbing manifest for you 
Next time you feel that compelling urge to escape or numb a feeling, take a deep breath instead and ask yourself, what am I trying to avoid right now? This can help you determine whether the distraction is something you want to devote your attention to or whether you might be better served by turning to face the issue that's troubling you, perhaps taking a walk or journaling to help reflect on it. Resisting the urge to numb will help you to build mental muscle to realize what a powerful force the urge to escape reality is and to gain a more profound and fulfilling level of connection to life. Sleep Your Way to Greater Connection by Christine Klusman of christineklusman.com. Looking for easy ways to improve how connected you feel on a daily basis? Here's one you literally can do in your sleep. Good mental health and well being truly begin with getting enough sleep. Research shows that nearly all our most essential life activities depend on it. Our ability to cope with stress, fight off illness, gain or lose weight, learn new things, and retain memories are all affected by the amount of quality rest we get. Sleep also impacts how much we eat, how fast our metabolisms run, how creatively we think, and how fast we process information. It's really, really important for living, for thinking, and for connecting. So let's get a little more serious about our shut-eye. People have written entire books about this subject, and I have a comprehensive checklist from my days as a hospital sleep hygiene instructor at Harvard Medical School, but these three basic tips should get you on a healthier path. Number one, schedule. Go to sleep and get up around the same time, every day, seven days a week. This is the number one most important thing you can do to improve your sleep habits. More important even than the amount of sleep you get. After just a few days of regular bedtimes and wake up, your body's natural circadian rhythms will kick in and help you fall asleep faster with more solid, satisfying rest. Number two, sanctuary. Make sure that your room is cool, completely dark, and that all electronics and glowing lights are removed or covered up. If you can't sleep without your phone in the room, put it on airplane mode. You want to reduce the heat, light, and electromagnetic waves, and make sure your room is a sacred sleep sanctuary. And number three, screen time. Minimize all screen time, TV, smartphone, computer, etc., during the last hour or two before bedtime. Blue light in these screens blocks the secretion of the sleep hormone melatonin, keeping you awake past your natural schedule. If you like to read before bed, keep it old school with actual paper books, not Kindles or tablet readers. And if you must look at your devices one last time before bed to set an alarm or because you really only have an e-reader, make sure to set your device to the lowest brightness you can tolerate. Turn on the nighttime function available on most smartphones and choose the black background option available on most e-readers. The goal is to minimize the amount of bright light hitting your eyeballs. It's also worth critically evaluating whether you let yourself peek at emails right before bed. If you anticipate the sender or topic will set your brain churning, save it for the morning. You just listened to the posts titled, Numbing versus Relaxing. Are you disconnecting from life? And Sleep Your Way to Greater Connection, both by Christine Klusman of christineklusman.com, and I'll be right back with my commentary. It goes without saying that a lot of people don't know where to start when it comes to investing. Many think you need a lot of money to invest, and some put off investing because it doesn't seem urgent. Acorns makes it easy to start automatically saving and investing for your future. You don't need a lot of money or expertise to invest with Acorns. In fact, you can get started with just your spare change. Acorns recommends an expert-built portfolio that fits you and your money goals, then automatically invests your money for you. And I love Acorns because I feel that this type of automation is exactly the boost needed for the many people who like the idea of investing, but haven't felt ready to begin for whatever reason. I've been there, and I know how relieving it can be to finally get over the hump, wishing I'd started sooner. So head to acorns.com old or download the Acorns app to start saving and investing for your future today. Paid non-client endorsement. Compensation provides incentive to positively promote Acorns. Investing involves risk. Acorns Advisors LLC and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. View important disclosures at acorns.com OLD. Thank you to Christine. 
I do think there's a fine line between numbing and relaxing, or escaping versus intentional escaping, because it's easy to say after the fact that we needed that escape, when in fact that could just be an excuse to not think about problems or anxiety or whatever it is we're trying to avoid, even if it's just our own thoughts. I think her suggestion is great and simple. That's probably what I love about it most. It's not difficult. It's actually very easy and something I've been doing every morning more recently, a simple check-in. You can ask yourself the question she suggested, what am I trying to avoid right now? Or you can just check in with what you're feeling. What's your body feeling? What does it need? How about your mind? What's going on in your head and what could your mind use today? And what about your emotions? These questions might only take a minute to answer, maybe even less, but it could mean the difference between a bad day or a mediocre one and a day that feels like you accomplished something, even if that does involve a lot of screen time. Intentionality is everything. So thank you to Christine for both of these posts today. Hope they were helpful for you. And thank you for being here with me and listening every day, and I'll be back tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.